was started years ago to validate the historical um, dignity of the African. And I say that importantly because um, most Africans in the Western Hemisphere, and it actually end up coming back to Africa too in the colonial system, were educated to the misinformation that we were nobody, that Africa produced no civilizations, that Africa did not have a recorded history, that's why that we only had an oral history, and that no good thing came out of Africa. We were labeled the dark continent. But fortunately for us, we've been able to discover our roots. We've been able to discover the brilliance of African civilization. Not only the brilliance of African civilization as it relates to African people, but to be able to study how African civilization, African belief systems, African arts and sciences form the cornerstone and the foundation of what we understand today as Western civilization. Treasure that is the pride and beauty of every nation is the knowledge foundation upon which that nation stands to construct its progress. The beginning of life, as in all the big books of wisdom, agree to the fact that God created the heaven and earth and said, Let there be light, and there was light as it is written in Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the waters. And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. Then God said, let us make man in our own image. In our own likeness. creatures that move along the ground. Genesis 1.26 God then blessed them and said, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fishes of the seas and the bears of the air, and over every living creature that moves on the face of the earth. From this time on, man was set free to manage his own existence. The need for food, clothing and shelter in relation to what God has given him made him gain the art of reasoning. Knowledge for survival became the key principle for the birth of families, groups nations and empires and also knowledge for survival became the key principle for greed and power. 
in this direction was a birth of Aegyptus or Egypt, which means black, a Greek word used to describe the Nile Valley dwellers who identify themselves as the Kas, Kants, or Kana. You know, in the days gone by, things were not as they are now, human wise. Today we see one another as differences of people. Like you can see the Hausa man, the Kanuri, the Ewe, the Akan, or the Gan, as different people. In those old days, long, long ago, which we call prehistoric days, all these people were one. They were united. Even Christian and Muslim religions confirmed that time immemorial people all over the world now at that time concentrated on one point in a place in Asia where Iraq now exists that is the confluence of two great rivers the Tigris people call it Tigris and the Euphrates where they meet there at the place we call Aja or Hope. The tree calls it differently, the Ga calls it differently, the Hausa calls it differently, but the the Eve call it Aja. At the collapse of the Songa Empire, those perceived to be Akans continued their migration southwards through present-day Burkina Faso into the present territories of Ghana, where they also continued with their migrations. Then the Igbos, the Yorubas, the Elvis, and the Gans went along the Niger River until they arrived at Benue, where the Igbos and the Yorubas also remained and started their internal migrations in that land. And the Eves and the Gans continue from there through the whole now Benin, Togo, until they also arrived at their present locations within Ghana. Biblical history and anthropology show that many West Africans, including the Gans, the Akans, the Yorubas, the Igbos, the Wolofs, the Fulanis, have strong Hebrewisms identified with their cultures. Hebrewism is a culture that came in the form of the laws of God as recorded in the first five books of Moses. Along the line, we came with a chieftaincy. Chieftaincy which today many people are saying that is not relevant, is it? No. It comes all the way from Israel. That is why when you are visiting the big palaces, at the entrance, you see a statue of a lion. That is the sign of the tribe of Judah. Now that you've heard this, take a trip around the country. Visit all the big, big palaces. You'll come to the notice of what I've just said. Again, you remember the incident that took place, the wall of Jericho that fell. Along the line, seven priests were commanded to blow their horns ahead of the Ark of the Covenant. Seven times they went around the wall until it fell. From this experience, when you come to the Ghanaian traditional society, the king is also carried in palanquin. And in front of him are seven home blowers. This is no coincidence. It's a continuation of our culture that we carried all the way from Israel. We must also remember um, David is important too because he has a direct link um, with contemporary Africa and that David had a son Solomon and David's son Solomon you know in the Psalms of Solomon he mentioned I am black but comely and in the, in the book Psalm of Solomon also uh, Solomon um, we know entertained the Queen of Sheba the Queen of the South and out of that there was a marriage and out of that marriage there was a son and that son was Menelik the first 
Solomon, um, having entertained that son in Jerusalem for a number of years, so Solomon sent him back into Ethiopia. And when he sent him back to Ethiopia, he sent with him 1,000 members of each tribe of the 12 tribes of Israel. 1,000 of the firstborn of every one of them princes went back into Ethiopia with Menelik, the son of Solomon, into Ethiopia. That began to be the emergence of the monarchy in Ethiopia that lasted all the way up to his imperial majesty, Emperor Haile Selassie. So it meant that the African Hebrew was the only one that maintained a king on the throne that can trace himself all the way back to King David and King Solomon all the way up to our contemporary day with the Lion of Judah still as the symbol, the six-pointed star still as the symbol, with that six-pointed star that linked us all the way up to today that we have a royal line that's older than any royal line amongst any of the European royal families of today, with a success of kings of 222 kings in succession that can be traced to the Ethiopian kingdom. So now we are faced with a dilemma. The culture that maintained us for thousands of years now is looking to us to be maintained. Linguistically too, there are similar sounding words in our dialects and the Hebrew language. It is beautiful. In Akan we say Efe. In Hebrew, it's Yafe. And in Gan, Efe. In the same way, welcome in Hebrew, we say Burukaba. And then in the other language, the Akan and other languages, we say Akwaba. Then we say, I'm coming. In Hebrew, it is Aniba. And then in Akan, Meba. In Gan, Nimba. When you look into the books that were produced by the Europeans, the illustrations that they did. There's one that shows Moses holding the Ten Commandments. He's dressed in a familiar outfit, a jumper and then a cloth that is worn over it. In the same illustrations, you see Jesus dressed in that same manner. There are also evidence that we also have. There's one that we have about Kwame Nkrumah being put together with the one that Moses uh, outfit for you to see the similarity in it. And to this day, Ghana and probably Benin and Togo are still the same people who dress like this with a jumper and the cloth worn over it. So the similar cultural practices, as I have mentioned earlier, indicate the fact that we trace the source of our culture all the way back into the scriptures. So today, if somebody were to ask you who are the people of the Bible, you have to give an answer. The people of the Bible are black. They are African. And how is this documented? We know that the Ur of the Chaldees which sat at the, at the, um, the mouth of both the Tigris and the Euphrates Basin. Um, in the Bible, this is recorded as the home of Abraham, who is recorded as being the father of the three major Western religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. Um, Ur of the Chaldees was a Kushite empire, and we understand Kush name is meaning, and both Hebrew and Arabic means black. And Kush was the ancient name of Ethiopia. This is where we have it with Moses himself, with the miracle he showed, with his hand being put in his bosom. He took it out, he was turned all white. He had to turn all white from something. Couldn't be white and turn white. Then he put it back in his bosom and turned back to his natural color. So it said Moses' hand turned back to his natural color. When his sister Miriam, who's a very powerful priestess, when she spoke against her brother Moses, uh, we are told that um, the Almighty didn't like that. So he um, plagued her for seven days and turned her white. If he turned her white, then what color was she before the Most High plagued her? I would press for this consciousness of you know, our race and our people because, you know, we, live, we all have generational kind of existence. Uh, those who started the movement long ago are gone and unless you know, each generation continues, and takes it up, you know, at some point, you know, it will be left in midstream. So I'm glad that we are rallying around, reminding ourselves 
of our common heritage and also of the strength of this heritage in terms of what we can achieve when we use our heritage in positive ways in this contemporary world in which we are. Learn from yourself so as to know who you are. Leaders are sent there so as to know how to take their people there. Global DNA assessment narrows the source of human family tree to Africa, hence strengthening the general fact that the black race has always been there since creation. It is also a fact that the Migrational Party defends the reasons why there are blacks in Asia, Australia, and the Americas. So the common logic to the fact that the original race who carried the commonalities that are spread over the globe are in Africa is undisputable. In Africa as a whole, there are several hundreds of ethnicities and languages. And, but I think we should occasionally step aside and also celebrate the commonalities, things that we have in common as a country. Then of course it's also the, uh, the pieces of archaeological evidence that have been brought to bear um, in seeking to explain the origins of the Akan people and that the Akan language, it is said, may have originated from the Akkad, a language called the Akkad, which was spoken in, in ancient Babylon. Um, we are not in a position to go further beyond this kind of evidence, um, so we can leave it there. Look at it from the viewpoint that, in cultural terms, Anansi is supposed to be the the source of culture. I sought to link it with a, a mythical personage um, in ancient Babylon called Oyanis, sometimes Yunanis, and that uh, this was a folk hero, a personage, a mythical personage within the folk tales um, of ancient Babylon. And he thinks that this announce we have here is a migration virtually from uh, Babylon. First of all, you find that there are several cultures in Africa that have the spider at the folk hero in their folk tales. Within Ghana here itself, the name itself has spread um, almost throughout the country among the Ghana, among the Ever, uh, and so on and so forth. They all have Anansi. And looking at Anansi, the spider, not just that you find the spider throughout the, throughout the world or throughout the countries of Africa. But Anansi or the spider itself can be found in several folk tales in Central Africa, in Eastern Africa, and in West Africa here. Even if they have a different name for it, it's the same Anansi spinning its web um, in various parts of the world. Now, beyond Ghana here, you go to the Caribbean, and it's amazing how the slave trade may have um, arrested our development and human resource base to a large extent, but did not succeed in stopping the spread of our culture, in stopping the links or the bonds that unite the people of Africa. We know we are one people. Of course, we can um, strengthen this by referring to our history, from our, uh, referring to uh, the migrations and so forth, and referring even to the commonalities in our languages and so on. But the important thing when we have all that information is to come together and act as one people. It doesn't matter where we are, whether in Ghana or Nigeria or Zimbabwe or America or whatever, you know, taking this kind of consciousness of one people, you know, a step further than the early you no know, rumblings about it. 
low bird borrows the wings of another bird to fly. The level of a leader is found or searched from the people he leads. When you talk of the beginning of this world, you have to go back to Nubia, Egypt, where everybody has accepted that uh, civilization from religion, philosophy, astronomy, um, science, culture has originated. In, in the ancient Egyptian tongue, referring to the beginning of this world, it was also a ga tongue as Jene Shishin. The term Jene Shishin, meaning the beginning of the world, Jene Shishin, as the Greeks who have documented that they were taught by the Nubians of the Nile Valley in Egypt, corrupted the term to be Genesis. This Genesis today, from our King James Version, refer to the term Genesis, speaking of the beginning of this world. The coincidence of the Gans referring to the beginning of the world as Genesh or Genesis and the first book of the King James Bible to be called Genesis and the similarities of the Hebrew referring to man as Benin and beauty as Yafe and mother as Ima which is not different in our local languages and finally despite the Evers calling them Aja or Hogbe the Gans call them Nubi the Akans call them the Kas the Akan who refer to himself as Kenny for example, has expressions like Enimguazia Enfata Kaniba or Ohiana Emma Kaniya Abua. Despite the coincidence, if any, between the Gans and the Akans, the surprising things between them are much greater than we can imagine. The similarities between these two tribes have names like Teria, Ankara, and Eje. There are other similarities, as for example, the Gans will say Awale, the Akans will say Awaide, and in English, Spoon. In Gan, Ayawa, Akan, Ayowa, English, Brass Pan. In Gan, Mimba, Akan, Meba, English, I am coming. In Gan, Eye Ayroho, Akan, Eye Ayroho, English, it is pathetic. In Gan, Mobo, Akan, Mobo, English, sad. Inga, Anunyam, Akan, Anionyam, English, glory. Inga, Boa, Akan, Boa, English, to group. Inga, Oboade, Akan, Oboade, English, creator. Inga, Bo, Akan, Bo, English, to create. Inga ebomi, akan abomi. English, I have sold at a loss. Inga eche, akan ache. English, long time. And to crown it all, when the Ashanti's warriors chant their war song. <laughs> Expression waya waya, common to both tribes, are translated as we are going. So, considering the many similarities, other words, between the two tribes, it is clear to note that if they both migrated from different directions and carried similar things in common, then they should be coming from a common source, Aegyptus or Egypt. History has also defended the relations between the Evers and the Akans through the names of the days in the week. Monday in Akan, Juada, Ever, Joda, Tuesday, Benada, 
Blada, Wednesday, Ukuada, Ukuda, Thursday, Yawada, Yawda, Friday, Efiada, Fida, Saturday, Mimenida, Mimida, Sunday, Kwesiada, Washida. The two tribes also named their male and female born the same way as a Monday male born child is called in Akan Kwajo and in Eve Kojo. Tuesday in Akan Kwabina Eve Kobla. Wednesday in Akan Kwaku Eve Koku. Thursday in Akan Yao Eve Yao. Friday in Akan Kofi Eve Kofi Saturday in Akan Kwame Eve Kwame Sunday in Akan Kwesi Eve Kosi Similarly, a Monday female born child in Akan is called Ajoa Eve Ajo Tuesday Abina Eve Abla Wednesday Equia Eve Aku Thursday Ya Eve Ya or Yawa Friday Nakan Efia Eve Afi Saturday Inakan Ama Eve Ama Sunday Inakan Akosuya Eve Akosua For we, the Gao people, our history dates back, some thousands of years back, which traces our ancestry to the Nile rivers. The word term Ga itself means first, oldest or eldest. And the Ga word is connected with the name Ganumbi. In the Gan language, the Gans have referred to water as Nu. And B means children. So the word Numbi, meaning the children out of waters, water children, that name was what was later derived for the word Nubian, as Nubians. And we know that in ancient history, from the facts of um, civilization, the Nubians are known to be the first known existing race on this planet. And for the Gan people, we have a term that we used to say that meaning we have come from afar. And our ancestors have settled along the Nile River, which later became known as the Nile. It is we who sit here as Africans and black people. We were there. Um, the Bible has told us about all the great things that happened in Israel. And in the past, there was no point in time that reference was made to us as black people. But then, um, I had a rude Awakening, a very shocking awakening because when Wabajeke was released, I had a call from the African American Hebrew Society in Israel. At the time, I hadn't heard of them at all. They invited me to Israel for me to actually have a close um, observation about us Africans. The oldest city in the world, as far as the Bible goes, say, is, is um, Jericho. And when we entered Jericho, I think that the very first person I met there was blacker than anything black that I can imagine. I took a photograph with him. All around me were people of my kind. Then, 
um, we went to a village called the Shegev Shalom. And the chief in the village was a black man. A whole chief in the village of Shegev Shalom. After the village of Shegev Shalom, we came to a school. I was asked to ask the children what the Hebrew name for beauty is. And they told me Yefe. And Yefe is an Akan language, which translates to mean beauty. Then again, I asked, well, what is the Hebrew name for man or male? And they simply said, Bain. Bain is Fanti and it's Akan. And I asked further, what the Hebrew name for mother is. And they said, Ima, which is Ga. And um, if uh, the tone changes a little bit to Ima, it means mother in Hausa. It is no wonder that people who are sitting thousands of miles away from the River Jordan are singing when, when you go by uh, 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 some of the cultural troops in the evenings and stuff like that is. Did you know that Akan is traced in the Bible? Genesis 36, verse 27. Uh, history has it that, you know, the Akans, you know, were a group of people that, you know, came together and they came together as one unit based upon the fact that they all belonged to an Ebushia. And the Abushia being the first unit of the Akan, you know, led to various, you know, uh, different classes that later we saw as the population increased. But most people, most Akans will understand the other person if the person expresses himself. Even within the Asante group, there are dialects. We have the Amansia people, the way they speak. The what do you call it? The Asante Achim, the way they speak varies with you know the the depending upon which locality you're talking about. I'm very conversant with the Asante one, so I will dwell a lot on it. As I mentioned, the mother of all the accounts clans is the Ekwona clan. We have the Ekwona Breakthrough Oyoko, Asuna, Aguna, Asachri, and then Adriana and these different clans can be found in virtually all the groupings that make up the Akan tribe. I mean, I'm sure starting from where I am, the Asantis are Akans, the Fantis are Akans, major part of the Enzimas are Akans, the Kwaus are Akans, the Achims are Akans, you know. So across Ghana, the Bronze are Akans, the Aquapims are Akans. You get me. So any other the groups that I've talked up to you about speak chi. Now, if you move from the links between Ghana, between the Akan people, between the Ever people, uh, with other ethnicities, either in parts of West Africa or ancient Egypt, you come within Ghana itself. I mentioned earlier that. There are so many ethnic groups in Ghana here that appear to be very diverse. Somebody from Sefi in Western Ghana travels to Northeast Ghana, walks among the people of Chakosi people in Northeast, and thinks he hears or understands bits and pieces of their conversation. The answer is as simple as that. The people of Sefi uh, in Western um, Ghana belong to a language group to which the Chakusis also belong. Um, the same language group um, has the, the Nzema, the Ahanta, the Awin, the Sefi, 
and so on. But they have brothers who have themselves in, in northeastern Ghana. Similarly, the Chiripongs, the Anums, the Bosus, the Latte, people that live on top of the, of the hill, speak almost the same language as the Futus and the Wutus. And it is the same big family or language family that is also found in, in northern Ghana uh, among the, uh, the, the Gunjas. The Gunjas, the Wutus, the Futus, the Enum people, the Latte people, the Nkonya people in parts of the Volta region uh, have not spread throughout the country. Uh, all belong to one tree. Now move from there. For example, when I was um, invited by the president um, to be part of the Waku Commission that took us to Yendi for us to investigate the Yendi crisis of 2002. I myself sat among my commissioners wondering at first what the hell is happening. While I sat in Suyani, that's where most of the sittings by the Waku Commission took place. Among the Dagumbas, among the witnesses that we were listening to, names like Kojongula, names like Muru Champong, uh, Kwejo Donko, Sumani, Achiri. And these are people who are Dagumbas. Why did they pick these names that appear to be Akan? When the Osu were celebrating the Homo War, they had visitors who are really not visitors. They are kinsmen from Akwamu. Akwamu people, Akwamus are Akans. But whenever the Homo War people are celebrating them, whenever the Akwamus are celebrating their Ujura, they exchange visits. At the age of four, at number five, whenever there is an Ujura festival, I used to sit in front of my father. My father was then the miniature of uh, James Najman Kudabrambo. It was a root of a stool, this, uh, stool that came from Obusmasi through Wesiakwa. But there, there are sections. Sections, uh, referring to the sections, are a group of families. We have Ajuma Guda Rampo. Because the people who first came to establish there came from Ajumaku. And then we have Adanse. Adanse is uh, partly Ashantis and uh, uh, from Fantis, I believe. And then you have Tru. They are also from another sector. Then you have uh, uh, two other sectors. And that's what created the royal dynasty of the Jameson of uh, Accra. In Jameson, we celebrate it's, uh, two uh, festivals, the Hobo War and the Ujira Festival. Sunday, we, uh, we, we give thanks to God and everything and the door. We, we pour our mission to the schools and everything. And then on Monday, we have our Dre Festival, which is basically the, uh, the main pivot uh, tradition of the people of Jamaica. The book that I wrote on the music of Africa was an attempt to give kind of survey of the diversity and at the same time impress on our minds the, the commonalities. And for me as a creative person, using the differences positively in creative work can be a great thing that we can offer to the rest of the world. No man borrows the teeth of another man to smile. Learn from yourself so as to know who you are. In spite of the diversity that we have in Ghana here in the area of cultures and languages, there's so much we have in common that we need to celebrate. And there are a number of mediums or instruments through which this commonality has come about. Let's use the example of the talking drum. 
the tympan drums that are drummed by, largely by the, by the people of um, Akan, among the Akans. I was fascinated when one of the drummers told me that they went on a parade, one of the Derbes, uh, during the, in the 50s or 60s. When he sported, he was from Ashanti, and then he sported another drummer coming from, it was a guy, also using the talking drums. So this drummer from Ashanti used his talking drum to ask a question of his colleague. Oduman Kumachirema Ufrihini. Oduman Kumachirema Ufrihini. It's clearly a, a can. And the ga drama responded, Mifriga, Mifriga, Mifriga. What is happening here? The same talking drum the Tumpain, eh, which now integrates the Akan, the Ewe, the, 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 the Ga, and other parts of the northern region. The drum used among various ethnic groups, but most of the time when it speaks, regardless of whether it is being used among the people of Dagomba, among the people of Ga, or among the, among the Ewe's, parts of the language that are spoken are Akan. So if as of today, the Gans, the Eves, and the Akans have names like Aku, Avalan, Afi, Ajua, Akuya, what difference will it make if others are called Kwaku, Kwashi, Kujo, or Kwaku, Kwesi, or Kojo? What matters is why all this knowledge system was kept away from us. Some school of thoughts says it is partly due to the slave trade when all the strong middle aged intellectuals were separated from the old and the young. A knowledge gap was created in the same system. Kudos to our rural folks who have kept our traditions, which is now the treasure and pride of our knowledge foundation. Despite the delayed is in the waiting for the present to open it for us to begin to construct our progress. So similarly, several institutions and slices of our culture have spread. So there's a substantial amount of integration, certain areas where you cannot even distinguish uh, who borrowed from who, common vocabulary items, and several aspects of our culture. Have And of course, we say that with the knowledge that we've just shared today, that we here in West Africa trace our roots all the way to the basin of civilization.